recording. All right, well, I don't know if the little graphics are going to come up when I play this. or in my, This is a Scientolopedia podcast, and we've got a very special guest today. We've got Max Corey from Ronsor Grenchen in Switzerland is going to talk with us about a wide variety of things. I'm very excited to talk with Max. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the podcast. Hi, this is Dave LaCroix with being joined by Max Horry. Max, how are you? And good to see you. Hi, Dave. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm yeah. It's, it's been a while since we talked, at least in person. We've corresponded by email, but so it's good to talk to you. Yes. So, um, well, we did this a couple of years ago, and we had such a great talk and you gave us so much good information up to date about what's going on there in Europe and a wide variety of things but our recording technology didn't work so we, we didn't get it recorded so uh, now we have a system where we can record this and um, so people can see and see you and get to know you a little bit and hear about what's going on uh, of course, my audience is, although there's people from all over the world, we've got people primarily in the U.S. sort of, you know, the majority are in the U.S. And uh, they heard about you. They know a little bit about you. Everybody says good things about, you know, Max Hari and Ronsor Grenchen. And those guys are wonderful, but they haven't really, uh, you know, talked to you or heard you explain what's going on. So, um I guess uh, we just start with how is it going there with your org and uh, what you're doing? Well, I'm doing fine and the org is doing great, actually. We have all these people from all over the place. They are really coming from everywhere, from South Africa, from Russia, or also from America and, of course, of Europe. But, yeah, we are actually, our org is running really good. I'm happy with that. I mean, our staffs, we are now seven full-time staffs and we are four part-time staff. They are really busy and they're working and that's, that's fine. That's fantastic. Well, I'm going to show a couple of, I'm going to bring up a couple of images, but maybe first just to give people a little bit of a flavor of how many people are uh, with you and how many people you're dealing with. I've got a little video I'm going to show. You're, you'll be familiar with this, but um, let me see. Where is it? Uh, ah, here we go. So this is just give a little bit of people about, or little people a little bit of an idea of the kind of enthusiasm that you guys are generating. Congratulations. Oh, it's, for some reason, it's yeah, not. Thank you very much. Thank you. Having some problems with these videos. But the idea is to get an idea. We can talk yeah. over this. But was this a graduation? Yeah, this was actually a master. And we have always, when we are in Russia, in the evening, we have a master. And then all the people come there and I, I give a small speech then normally, and then of course we have the certificates of the day, and then there are the wins of the PC and students uh, attaining the camp. So this is actually quite a cozy moment in the end of the day. So this was in Russia? That was in Russia, definitely. Ah, I just okay. wonder where it was what I see here, because I... I, I, can play, I, I can play a little bit more and uh, maybe that'll... No, I, that, that's not, that's okay. I mean, this is fine here. Okay. This is not so important, actually. Well, I just, it's, it's important in the sense that we don't have groups getting together like that here in the U.S., you see. That's very inspiring in this day and age to see people outside of the church getting together and using the tech. So... It's quite inspirational. That's why I wanted to just show that little clip of it and uh, let you talk about what was going on there. 
Mm -hmm. What would you like to hear from me? I mean, how we make the groups or... Uh, well, let me show ask, you something Ask else. me a specific question. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring up something else that will jiggle, uh, help us uh, come up with some ideas. Um, oh, I know what I did wrong. All right. Uh -huh, yeah. So, first of all, now this picture may be dated, but there's uh, some of your people, yourself, right. and your, your beautiful wife, and some of your staff. And I just thought it, for people that aren't that familiar with you and what you're doing, it'd be good to see their happy, smiling faces there in uh, Ronsorg. That's right. That's right. So, so, I mean, this is just the stuff. This is the, the hardcore stuff, basically, not the part times. What do you see here? Uh, okay. That was a picture we made about four or five years. Uh, no, probably three, three, um, three, four years ago we made that when we came new in the house we are living in now here in Grenzen. Okay. And did you mention to me, that maybe it was before we started recording this, how many staff you have now and how seven. many people? Yeah, this is seven full-time staffs we have and we have four part-time staff. And we have actually about 230, 240 people online who are more or less active. I mean, those are really active. They are uh, auditing somewhere and reporting or they are coming to the org regularly. This is about 230 people right now. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, I've, I've said and people have said that you're probably the largest, most successful field group in the world. Do you have any, do you know of any group that's got higher, uh, more active than you are? Or is, or is that correct? You're the, you're the most successful field group in the world, right? Most probably we are. I mean, there is a, a big group also in South Africa. They, it's also a nice group. We have a strong groups in Russia. There is one organization which is probably the same size as we are. I don't know, maybe not in the amount of public, but in the amount of delivery because they, they really demand that the students are coming intensively when they come. So we, we are not, we are a bit relaxed about that. So if someone is a year on a course, okay, then the person is a year on the course. But they really say, when you come on the course, then you are in three months and you are through. That's it. So What group, what group is that? That is actually, it's called Ron's Org Number 1 from Moscow. Oh, and they have quite a lot of, yeah, yeah. And they have quite a lot of uh, um, all, uh, staffs and auditors. And when I hear about their auditing, I mean, the well done auditing hours, they are talking about 600 in a month. And wow. we are far from that. Wow. So it's really incredible how they work. But when I look at the figures of the amount of publics they have online, they have around 120 maybe, or even less, or I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit confused because we have to dub more people online than what they have. And that surprises me. But the statistic in the well done auditing hours and in the course room, they are impressive. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic to hear. Um, there's one thing that I thought was very odd recently. There was, you probably know more about it, but apparently the Church of Scientology in Moscow was raided. And there was a video that showed, you know, the police were inside while the staff and the public were also in there. But the thing that stood out to me was there was a lot of people in that org i'm going wow you know the churches here in the u.s are just completely dead you know there's the park the parking lots are empty there's nobody on the course rooms and they show this church that's being raided by the police in russia but it's filled with people and that's the church that's you know we know how bad the church is so what you're saying about these groups outside the church I mean, Russia is just killing it with with Scientology these days, it sounds like. You know, it's really impressive. Absolutely. I have no idea about the church in Russia, how that is going on and so on. I didn't hear about that raid, actually. Oh. It is not so much in our minds. We just do our game and they play their game, so we don't care. 
Yeah, it was just an odd thing that I happened to catch because I don't follow all the latest on the church and what they're doing and all that. But, you know, sometimes you get these random things on Facebook or somewhere, you know, and I happened to catch that one. And it, I just thought it was fascinating that, you know, they're even under attack. They're, you know, they've got that many people in the church. But um, so this is fantastic uh, news to hear that there's that large of an organization and they're uh, doing so well. It'd be interesting subject to explore is why, you know, is it because the farther you get away from the, the church headquarters, the, the freer Scientology is? Or do you have any theory about why people are able to uh, or interested in, you know, building organizations um, there in Europe or in Russia? Whereas here, you know, we have a hard time getting uh, two people together online. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a different scene in the U.S. Do you have any perception of why that is? Russians are certainly different than Americans. Uh -huh. They they like groups. They they like to talk with each other. They are of course today they are also very much in the internet and mobile phones and all those things. You know with uh, WhatsApp and these kind of things. They are certainly in that too. But their mentality is much more to connect with each other and talk with each other. And yeah, they they don't hesitate to call someone and talk and talk. And they're very communicated communicative in that regard. And I think also they are not so much brainwashed in regard of Scientology. What I see, for example, here in Europe, in Switzerland mainly, people up to the age 30 or 40, they don't know what Scientology is. When you speak with someone and say to him, yeah, you're doing Scientology, and so he says, what's that? And no idea. But when you speak with someone who is older than that, then he, he uh, yeah, he is afraid of Scientology and doesn't want to do it and so. And in Russia, there was not so much uh, implanting how bad Scientology is. And when there was, People didn't listen so much to it because, you know, in the Soviet time, they were actually, uh, they learned that the mass medias are not accurate and you shouldn't listen to it. So you, they're not so brainwashed in that regard. And, well, they, they like to read, actually, at least those generations I met. The younger generation, I don't know when they now grow up with the mobile phone and so, I don't know how much they still read. But that was quite a subject. They, they are very good educated and they easily read and you can give them a book or something to read and they really can duplicate and understand it. That was, when we arrived there, that was quite, quite good. And I didn't, I wasn't aware of that in the beginning. So That's that could be a point. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so. You you told me uh, by email that you're going there. You have a, a camp coming up or something uh, soon. Soon, yes. Uh, we are going to Turkey, actually. Oh, Turkey. Okay. Yeah, we go to the beach. You must understand Russia. You know, this is something like uh, in the central of North America, not South America, and the north parts of the U.S. You have basically long and cold winters, so they prefer to go to a place where it's warm and they have some sea and so and they still have sun. So they combine it with that. So they go two, three weeks to the beach when they go off from home, you know. So we go there. That'll be like a training camp where you're training people to audit and so forth or what do you do? Yeah, this our task there right now, I mean, we have trained them very, very much in the last 20 years now. It's exactly 20 years now that we have been there the first time. And they are very good trained, so we hardly can teach them teach them anymore. But what we are doing now is actually the L's. We deliver the L's there, and it turned out to be good when we are really I are in a group there, some kind of an HEC, where we deliver that. 
because then you really have a CS on post and you have the auditor and the PC there, you know, going in session, out session, in session, going to the CS and so on. Mm -hmm. So the, everything is ro rolling, gives excellent success. We really get into case aspects. People have not been aware that they have case at all there. Wow. And how many people do you expect will be going to this? That's always an interesting question. We never know when we go there. <laughs> how many, you'll find you'll let me know after everybody shows up, right? I, yeah, I remember, probably, the, probably we will be around 120 to 200 people, something like this. Uh, I guess when we go there, quite some people come because it's in the south, it's in the warm on the beach, so we have some additional bonus. <laughs> That's a big uh, attraction. Yeah, I want yes. to get some case game, but uh, the warm weather is, uh, you know, which is more important? It's hard to decide. <laughs> it is sometimes also difficult because you lose some people on the beach. Well, yeah. But, uh, well, there was a famous picture that's been around for a while of the one you did probably several years ago now uh, in Egypt. Oh, and yes. In the photo, there looked to be, I don't know, 30 or 40 people. And... You know, people here in the U.S. see that picture and they go, oh, wow, how do they get a group like that to go? And now you're telling me you're, you're expecting somewhere around 150 yeah. in, uh, in Turkey. I mean, this is, uh, this is really great news and very cool to hear. Yeah. So let me uh, go. Uh, I'm showing a picture. I think that's of your academy right now in uh, Grinchin, right? The picture yeah, sure. that's up there. Um, I know you sent me some uh, graphs. This is uh, student points. Is that what this is a graph of? No, 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 no. Don't um, show, shy the people away or uh, how, how get rid of the people by uh, demanding that they must write down the study points. We don't demand that. Oh, okay. What you see here is it actually a um, statistic. Every point on this statistic is actually equal to hours of studying. So when a student is in the course room for two hours, you get one point here. And well, I don't see now the statistic here fully, but the... Yeah, it's a little compressed. It's a little small. Yes. It, it's, uh, a, it's also about seven years now, this statistic, what you see here, six, seven years. And the lowest line is 200 points. And it's called uh, counted in months. So okay. when you look on the left side, that was uh, in average, the red line is actually the average of the last 12 months. And the one which is uh, sharply going up and down are the monthly counted statistic. And the red one is the yearly counted statistic. I got you. So yeah, the lowest is... level is, or the lowest line is 200 uh, points. So that means 400 hours of studying per month. And now uh -huh. we are up there in the 600 and, well, you should actually show a little bit more in PT. This is, uh, can you move it a bit on the right I can't. side? I had, to, I had to just copy it and upload it. So I can't adjust okay. it or do anything with it. Uh, yes. I can't because even have... uh, bring it in to make it bigger. Okay. Um, unless maybe if I go full screen, you can see it a little better. Uh, I can try to go full screen here. Let me see what's no, it doesn't change much here. Anyway, when you're on the right side, there it's now again uh, nicely going up. We had a bit of um, break or breakdown, I mean, a little bit going down there. Two years ago, it was quite high, it was very good. And then it went a bit down, and now it's again going up very nicely especially the red line. I'm looking mainly on the red line, not so much on the monthly line. So that is really good. And we are working hard on that. I mean, this is um, something I'm, I'm pondering all the time about Div6 and that we get new people and making outflow. And so that's a big issue of myself because well, if you don't do that, you don't get the course room full. Right. And th that's the key point. This is a course room. See, uh, people here, course. again, I have to relate it to the U.S., but there's nowhere near this kind of this amount of activity and people on course on a weekly, monthly basis in the U.S. anywhere. 
that I know of. I mean, there are some people getting trained. There's people doing the solo course individually or working with individual, you know, field auditors or whatnot. There's a couple of centers, but no, this is, I mean, when you're saying this red line up here, let's say on the far right, that represents something like 600 hours in the course room in a month? No, you have to double it. It's actually 1,200. 1,200 hours yes. on a monthly basis. On a monthly basis, yes. And the highest ever you can see now, we had the highest ever, which is a bit more on the right side here. Okay. And uh, talking about the course room, I mean, the course room is, is the heart of the org. It's really the, it's the most important part. What I found out many, many years ago is, I mean, this was about uh, 1995 or so, the most important tool we have is the checkout. You won't believe it. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the most important thing. The less checkouts you give, the, the less the quality is in the course room and the statistic will crash after a in the long run. And this is really something, and this is also what I, I mean, I, the mail I sent to you, I was talking a little bit about what is standard tech and what not. And this is some, for example, something what, um, what I'm suspicious about, very suspicious. You know, this fast flow came actually after 72. Or when did you start in Scientology? I mean, did, do you remember this time when it? When yeah, it I remember it in '71, and uh, there wasn't a there wasn't even a tech dictionary then, <laughs> and there wasn't even a student ad course. I don't think had been released. But, but was there a status of fast flow that you don't need checkouts? That came later, uh, exactly. after after uh, Method One, and originally the fast flow was you had to have been super literate. In other words, do the primary rundown. Yes. and method one, and then you could be fast flow where you didn't need checkouts. But then they watered it down to if you'd, I think if you'd just done, if you'd done the student hat and method one word clearing, you could be fast flow where you didn't need checkouts, I think, as I recall. But that but, came later than 72, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that was more like in the, uh, well, I think it would have been mid-70s or late mid to late 70s when that sort of came about that i recall yeah, exactly this is this policy but how was it called uh i don't remember the name but i wonder if that was really lrh's intention this is really what i wonder because today we are very suspicious about when lrh actually left the lines yeah and our discussion go actually in the direction of that it must have been in 72 when he really took off the hands of the orcs. Well, there's other theories about what happened in 72, but <laughs> <laughs> and different points in time when people say, uh, you know, uh, the church was taken over or he left or whatever. So, uh, but this is phenomenal, the amount of production you're doing there. Uh, I'm sure that people watching this are just going to drop their jaw and go, oh, my God, you know, have we been sleeping? Because, see, here in the U.S., the vast majority of Scientologists that are outside the church, they're fixated on these TV shows and these blogs about the church, you yeah, know. Yeah. And it's been, you know, uh, very frustrating for me trying to, you know, activate groups and put out information about this, make the tech available and, you know, the positive stuff just runs into this, you know, like dead end to a great, to a large extent. Now we're starting, that's starting to change and I'm sure that we can get a lot of things going here in the U.S. And once they do wake up, look out, I think they will be gangbusters, but it's, uh, it's been tough. I see uh, the problem, what you're talking about, you know, is you have and we suffer of that too most of the scientologists we have are really aged i mean yeah. you are also no more young you know you are rather looking for the next lifetime than to start or to make this lifetime again rocking you know i mean i'm also close to 60 so it is we are rather aged and 
when we have been in Los Angeles a few years ago, I recognized that most of the people there are some of when I was there, it was between 55 and uh, infinity, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> and we need, if we want to rock it again, we need new young people. We don't need people 40 plus. We need people 15 plus, something like this. I mean, yeah. when did you start Scientology? You were maybe 20s or even not 20, you know? I was 19 when I, was st when I started. And yeah. most of the old times we have here, they started somewhere between the age of 16 and 25. And we need yeah. those people. And if we fail to do that, forget it. It will just disappear. Yeah, that's an excellent observation. Very astute. I see these guys. I have a, a large Facebook group, and it's a mix. new, Brand new people and old timers, veterans. And there's a lot of new ones that come into that group. And you can tell that if only they would sit down in a course room and, you know, apply study tech and learn how to audit, they'd be, you know, they'd be perfect auditors and they would you know, really, really love it. But they're out there and they're watching the, you know, all the stuff, the TV shows and the videos and Google stuff. And unfortunately, they're just kind of adrift and nobody is, you know, giving them the opportunity to sit down and, you know, get into an academy like you're doing. Yes. But, uh, so what we actually made a few years ago, we started with that. We started with a next gen camp of the next generation for the and and one of the policies in this next gen camp is that you are not uh, you cannot be older than 30 years because, <laughs> yeah really because i want to give those people uh, a possibility to be with themselves you know we, uh. we observed that we made the camps in switzerland and then we i have seen look most of the people are 50 plus and then you have a few young people and somehow they feel lost in those old people. You know, me, we may feel we are young, but we, we are not, even so we feel young, we are not <laughs> young. And yeah. we need to give those young, the next generation, we need to give them a, a, a space for them, you know, where they can uh, be. I mean, we have also been in our org when I was staff there, you know, we have been 20, 25, maximum 30 years old, basically. So give wow. them their space. Yeah, that's brilliant. I'm going to bring up another graph, which uh, you can talk about. This is um, auditors' hours. And, uh, well, auditors' hours and students' hours, I guess. Well, this is well done auditing hours. Uh, the blue one is actually the HEC, and the red one is the auditing by from the uh, auditors from the course room. Okay. I mean, and, not paid auditing. Right. So I don't know why it's chopped off, but um, some order of magnitude. What are uh, like the this highest ever in the uh, HGC hours? How many hours is that? And is that a monthly basis or weekly? That's also monthly, and a line is twenty. So the lowest line is twenty hours, forty hours, sixty hours. Uh, what do we have? Twenty. Over 100, 40, 50, the highest ever. Yeah, was, was 100, yeah. So, I mean, we, our stat is somehow flat on that. I mean, level. It is not, it's not really uh, moving up. It is not falling down. It is, in the long range, you would say it's an emergency. Okay. Well, like you say, the most important is the, uh, the training, what training is going on and who is, uh, I'm just going to put up your logo and then, uh, close this um, but the training is the uh, is the key I used to say because I did some internships in the in the church and I used to say this is back in the 70s that you could tell how well an org was doing by how many interns they had in there but really it's the same thing as saying how big are the course rooms how many people are how many students are training so the health you know and like LRH says you know students disseminate PCs don't so uh, I'm sure you mm. get a lot that, that's of a nice, That's a nice statement, actually. But uh, what I have observed, not many people disseminate. 
not today, <laughs> luckily. Well, we're going to get no, into no, that. No, honestly speaking, I mean, this is a real bad statistic what I have observed. I mean, we have about 230 people online, but the, the amount of those who are disseminating, this is probably uh, three, five people out of those 230. Yeah. Well, that's, um, I've been a div six or disseminator my whole life. I've been in sales in business. So for me to go up and talk to a stranger or to open a topic or get in communication with somebody, it's, you know, it's always been relatively easy, but for the average person, that's a huge leap, especially to talk about the subject of the mind, you know, I mean, uh, or the spirit, you know, so, that's uh, it's a challenge to get people to uh, to bring new people in. To have you found a successful action of how you uh, you know do get people to disseminate or get them to bring their friends in to you or anything that you've come across that's helped with that? <laughs> this is exactly the point. I mean, if I would be that successful, then I wouldn't have only three to five people who are disseminating. <laughs> Okay. Well, but good that, point. that is actually look. We what this is. Um, it's really an interesting subject, actually, a very interesting subject, because I said before that LRH probably took off the hands seventy two, and that is goes also along with all the technology what we have. Mm -hmm. What I have observed after, I mean, we started to deliver, I mean, I left the org in 83, then we delivered and we continued with delivering and went to Russia, had a lot of people and we got uh, many things asked, you know, thousands of questions and we had to see what they do and how, what is successful and what is not successful and so on. It was not, it was sometimes really uh, almost in, in the band of being critical of what we do, you know, do it correctly. And I also, I, I have a certain critical look what what's going on in a session and what is going on with my auditors and so on. And it turned out that the stuff we got from 78, 78 and later is actually altered. And it is no more what LRH taught in the 60s and on the class eight and so on. It is really altered. And mm -hmm. so whenever we found us in difficulties, we went back to the stuff from the briefing course what helped us a lot. Can you make your picture again that I can see you? It helps me a bit to talk with. Oh, sure. Otherwise I just I'm thought, talking I just to myself here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought I'd give it a chance uh, to just have you people get a better image of you. But yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah, that's fine. But uh, I really didn't have to talk my into my own face. <laughs> uh, so what what I observed then was that many aspects of the tech is altered. I mean, I can show you a policy letter from 1980. It is called Ethic, Justice, and the Dynamics, which is a nice policy letter. And we wanted to put it actually on our uh, on a course of us because it is a good, good summary of all of this subject. But we had some problems with the, with the policy because it is against homosexuality. And we have homosexual people in our lines. And then, you know, those people go through those courses and then you have to justify why you have this policy there, why, uh, why, uh, why you think this policy is good and so on. And I wanted to know where LRH says really about it and wanted to find out. I mean, today with computer, you really can scan through all the materials within a few seconds or minutes, depending on what gradient you go into it. Uh -huh. And then I got to the bright idea and said, okay, let's take something in the vicinity of this homosexuality and scan it on my computer. And I found that this part is actually copy paste 
from the science of survival, but not with the part of homo or with the word homosexuality in it. The perversion, yes, but the homosexuality, not. And then I went to the internet and was so I, uh, I was searching for a program to which can compare materials where they are taking from, you know, that they really are looking what is copy paste. And then I was going through this policy letter and that was very interesting. I found this is put together from the self-analysis book, from the policy or from the bulletin responsibility, a lot of the science of survival, from other books about seven or eight references have been taken and copy pasted into one policy letter and some part was probably written by someone else. I mean, we can now talk about, yes, but this is LRH, how it was done, you know? No, it is not. It is taken from some books and put into a new policy letter. And this is not what LRH really meant, you know? And certainly LRH didn't do that. That, that, that's the most important thing. He didn't do that. I mean, it's laugh. It's ridiculous that LRH would go and take his books and say, okay, copy paste that, copy paste that. And then you make a policy letter after that, from that, you know, he wouldn't do that at all. So no. that's a clear proof that 1980, this was messed up. And I mean, we can go into many bulletins and policies from this time, which are really not LRH. And then I was with Henrietta. She is helping me very much in Div 6. She is right now studying thoroughly OEC 6, the green volume number 6, you know. Uh -huh. And then we, we are just to, to, to get a full grasp of Div 6. I told, or she asked me and I told her then, well, study uh, the original OEC 6, which was released, what was that, in 74 or 76? and the new one and she got so confused with the new one and then i realized something and i had to say well do you know what most probably div 6 got altered i mean a lot of the policies got altered especially in the mid of the 70s and later which really makes us fail in div 6 in the promotion and marketing and everything you know and today i'm actually convinced that since the mid of 70s, we do not have a strategy in Div 6. We actually don't know what we are doing in Div 6 in all those 40 years. And this is where we end up now with having no new people, with having empty orgs wherever. I mean, it doesn't matter if you are talking now about the church or if we are talking about the free zone. This is where, what, where we can find the failure. So we are going now back to this original OEC 6 and we are trying to apply that to the modern technology we have. I mean, internet, uh, mobile phones and all those apps we have today. We have to bring it into this life we have today, but with the original uh, policies and ideas of LRH. Wow. Well, that's fascinating, and uh, the whole the subject of cleaning up the materials and getting the truth about you know what was LRH and what wasn't, and who wrote stuff, it will be just a you know ungodly monstrous project that will take a large team of people to someday ultimately sort out. But for right now, I think we're sort of up to our own. Um, you know, knowing this, what works, uh, what tech works. Uh, I I know a few but, things. That but, the, but this is exactly the point. Sorry, when I erupt here. When I, I started to sort out actually what is LRH and what is not LRH by what works and what doesn't work. And let, let me be honest, in the beginning, I mean, uh, 1978, when NED as a new aerodynamics came out, that actually was the start of a huge uh, squirrel and um, uh, not application time. I mean, we had so many 
natural clears, people who just got a tested clear only because they could actually spell the word Scientology. And <laughs> <laughs> you laugh now, but this is fact. I, I had to give, I was then a green auditor 79, you know, I was just, I was just, uh, I had just done the academy and new aerodynamics. And I had to give Scientology CS1 to people who were new to Scientology so that they could attest to clear. Yeah, I know. That whole, it's, I, I don't know if it's the problem with NED itself or with just the, the discovery or the statement that people could go clear on Dianetics and the way that's been handled over the years. I mean, I, I do cycles here, uh, you know, people that had been handled in the church or mishandled is more accurate. And, you know, it's very easy to clean them up and in less than, you know, half a dozen or so hours, sort out if they're clear or not and validate them and they're, you know, they're happy as can be. Or if they're not, you know, they're cool with the R factor. But yeah, that area of clears has done more damage to the field than maybe almost anything else. I don't know. But yeah, well, you know, people do not understand a lot about Dianetics, but I can tell you what they really understand. They understand it is dangerous to be audited past clear. And then they come in having two hours of Dianetics and they are afraid they could be clear and say, well, I could be clear and this is why and blah, blah. And they hesitate to be audited on Dianetics. Yeah. Well, uh, to say we've got a little work cut out for us is I guess a very big understatement, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, the, but uh, coming back, coming back to div six, you know, mm -hmm. I think this is really what we have to work on. I mean, my, one of my projects right now is working on that and to find a way how we can really get people into Scientology so that we can make new auditors and we can train them and we have an org full of people. I mean, our org is running fine, but compared to what I have seen and what I have heard from the 70s, you know, with Bob Mongiello and uh, I mean, a, a mission with 200 staffs. I mean, we have now a bit more than 200 publics online, but there were 200 staffs. I mean, that's, that's a dimension which is different. And that yeah. is just one org, I mean, one mission. Well, let me, so ask, we you you, let me ask you, let me ask you what you, my idea, the thing I'm sort of on a mission to get some, first of all, start with some webinars, just some YouTube videos or whatever, explaining the basics of Scientology, because surprisingly there is no, they don't exist. People, you know, it's like something that people didn't notice that there are no, we do all this, uh, like all these websites and a lot of stuff online, but then when people buy a book or download a book, I mean, they're for free or listen to lectures and they go, wow, I'd like to do some more. We don't have any place to send them other than to your org or a handful of places in the US, but there's no online videos, number one. And then from there, there's no online courses. Like why couldn't we have a course on the tone scale or on how to study basics of study or on the ARC triangle or parts of man? What's the reactive mind? You know, all these things could be courses that people could take online as a channel to then move them to a field practitioner, field group from there. So I'm interested in creating or getting people that want to work on creating uh, webinars, uh, you know, like the YouTube videos. You can watch a YouTube video in 10 minutes, learn how to change, you know, a light in your car and all all kinds of things. But not only YouTube videos, but taken from there is to online academies. What do you think of those that, that idea? So some kind of a life hack. Um, I'm not so fond of that. Okay. Because... <laughs> Yeah, really, I honestly have to say so. And I want the people in the course room. And if we don't get the people into the course room, we are gone. We disappear. We just disappear. Webinar, Skype auditing and all those things are just unlocking the orcs. And we need the orcs because 
when we talk here now, this is nice, this is beautiful, but it is not the same as having an org with, let me say, uh, 15 or 20 publics in it and about five staffs in it. This gives an, an atmosphere you never can get on, on the screen, you know? This is yeah. just not possible. When you have an org full of people, you have an atmosphere. And if when you have, let me say, 200 people in the org, this is a fantastic atmosphere. This is just great. You know, go you just go there to 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 get theta. You know, you go into the org just to to fill up your uh, batteries with theta, and yeah. you will never have that on Skype. You will well, never have that on webinars. This is it's not the same. Well, you and I have both experienced that in orgs, you know, and you're living it right now with your your group. But what brought us in, what kept us there was, um, you know, if you analyze it, as far as I'm concerned, is that something from reading a book or hearing somebody talk about Scientology, you immediately went and for a very small amount of money, you were able to sit down across from somebody and look at them without, without doing anything and you'd have a cognition wow there's something here you know this is interesting and you have the, you're right you have the social environment but what i'm talking about is a feeder line to get people to the orgs it's a marketing strategy or a disem strategy to feed that interest if somebody downloads dianetics and they read about it why not give them a, a quick seminar on how to audit Dianetics, they go out and find their sister-in-law who's grieving about her, you know, departed husband, give that person a session. And then now they've had a win with it, find a group or find a field practitioner, find a, you know, a local org. So I, I agree 100%, the brick and mortar, uh, live contact, there's no substitute for it. But as a feeder line, I think we could do more and get more people, you know, a taste of the tech, give them a little taste and they'll reach farther. They'll be more likely to reach. That's my theory. And, you know, um, it's up for today. It's a, it's a, it's a good subject of conversation, but uh, that's the way I look at it. The, I am very pragmatic in that. Either it fills the org or it doesn't. And I'm, I'm also critical with what I do, you know? I mean, I have not done yet so good that I can say, well, I know how to get tons of people into the org, you know? This is, I don't have that. We have new people, but by far not that much or many as I want. This is, we are still try and error here. We are not, we are not professionals really on that. We, we have projects, we are working on that, and we try to find where is really the entrance to get more people online. And we have to find it, and we have to find it rather quick. We should not wait too long. Yeah. And then, well, then it will run. Well, that leads me to, uh, maybe we can wrap this up, but I wanted to, I had mentioned to you, or I notified you about this OT committee that I, um, I started. Uh, I just wanted to see if there was enough interest and there was surprisingly there or what uh, thankfully there was a fair amount of interest because on a few just a few days notice we had about you know a couple dozen people or more show up for an online meeting you, you know just like this only there's you know a lot more people um, but an OT committee could possibly uh, get more people to sort of experiment and trial and error, diff do different things, you know, what works and what doesn't. And maybe that would be the chief, uh, you know, the primary function would be dissemination and getting some successful actions, whether it's advertisements online, you know, paying for Facebook uh, ads or uh, little videos or just what, you know, will drive people to the, um, the local org. So anyway, what do you, what's your thoughts about the idea of an OT committee? Good question. 
<laughs> well, I'm glad, you know, I feel good that I came up with a good question because a lot of my questions are kind of stupid probably most of the time. <laughs> I, I'm, as I said before, I'm very pragmatic on such kind of things. I, That's what I want. When you have people on an OTC or in such meetings, you have a lot of people who talk, but their talking is not based on doing this. I mean, yeah. if someone comes to me and says, look, this is my statistic, and I brought in, in the last 12 months, uh, 28 people, and uh, 28 of, or, I mean, uh, 24 of those um, 28 people are active in the course room or in the auditing, then I listen very, very careful to that person. Right. But then I hear a lot of people who say, oh, well, you know, we, you should do so and so and you did so and so and I'll raise I those that. Stats, and you just only have to be green on white and yeah. then it runs by itself and stand the pack and <laughs> no stand the pack and you don't have to worry something. <laughs> I, just, I said, thank you very much. Yeah, I get those too. I get people say, well, what we need is an online org or we need this or we need that or, you know, and I go, yeah, uh, good idea. Let me see you do something. But um, <laughs> I agree 100 percent. And my uh, during my tenure as head of this, because it's right, just a temporary position uh, for me, would be to separate out, you know, people that are going to step forward with a, a proposal that they themselves are going to do and how they're going to get other people to help them do that. And they're going to just report to the committee on what they did and what their stats are. That's what I'm going to, that's what I'm interested in. Not a bunch of expert consultants that tell us what we should do, you know, and what other people should get out there and do. Uh, but yeah, that's, you know, a committee. Uh, I just, hopefully the idea will um, take hold that it will make people feel like they're somewhat involved or they have a communication line to, and a connection to, you know, the forward actions that the committee or whatever the, the group decides to be involved with. And if uh, more people have that feeling, because we don't have that now, when, with the dispersal of the org, we don't have a central org, a central body and authority like when LRH was around. We don't have a cohesive, you know, glue that holds us together, um, you know, as Scientologists. Uh, other than when they walk in your door of your organization, or maybe when I'm talking to somebody on the phone personally, one-on-one, -on -one, but you know, we don't have that sense of a group connection right now. So maybe that'll help. Do you think it's possible anyways, that something like that could be done? Look, I think one of the <laughs> most important thing is that that we have people who are really dedicated and put an work there. It needs, it's, it's a full-time job. It is not uh, something you do sometimes in the evening, in the week. If you want to have an org, then you need some people who are working dedicated for that every day, basically. And then you can, after all, fill the org. And it is not depending on an OTC or any committee or any such things. It is really depending on people who are working hard for that. And this is what I miss. We have today very much people think, well, 30 hours work per week is by far good enough, you know, and then I need to get a uh, rest. I mean, such people you cannot use after all. They, they just disappear by themselves. So you need people who really want to do something, who really want to change something and getting the show on the road. It's hard work. I mean, you know, the policy affluence attainment, it means hard work. It is not something, uh, well, you, you just make some, put some ideas there and put it online on, on YouTube and so on. Then you think somebody is going to see that. This is not going to happen. You need, really need to work that you find a comb line and yeah, that you can approach somehow people. And this is coming back to what I said before. This is something we have to find out today how it works today. We lost 40 years, basically. Yeah. Well, all right. So that's a dose of reality for the, our listeners who, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
it's a it's it's a come what we used to call a come to Jesus meeting. You know, yes. uh, right. it's a little bit of, uh, you know, it's good because uh, you're the man who is there living it and doing it. You're not just it's not hy- hypothetical. It's your daily. Here you are on a Saturday night. I was uh, not sure to ask if you wanted to do this get together tonight because maybe you're going out to dinner or, you know, going to a movie or something. But uh, you're there at your org. Um, doing whatever you're doing on a Saturday night, but you know, you're holding it down and you're showing up and, and you've been keeping it going for years. And, uh, you know, my hat is off to you, sir, for what you do on a daily basis. And you're, uh, you're a beacon of hope and a beacon of, uh, you know, a true shining example of what LRH wanted a Scientologist to be like and do and have. So, um, thank you. You're welcome, and it's a pleasure to have uh, spoken with you, and I'm sure that the people that watch this, it will be an inspiration to them as well. I know it's an inspiration to me, and, you know, if any time, just let me know if you have something else that you'd like to um, do one of these about, or um, as always, we'll just stay in communication, and uh, That's good, I, yeah. wish, <clears throat> I wish you all the best there, and uh, to your wonderful wife and your staff, and so... Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. And goodbye. Okay, bye-bye. Goodbye, Max. Now I'm going to sign off here with a little bit of a exit um, music. Let me see where I can, if I could only find it. Oh, there we go. So I want to thank you all for uh, joining us today on the Scientopedia podcast. It was great talking with Max and uh, follow us on Facebook, find our YouTube channel, subscribe, go to the Scientolopedia website where all these podcasts are listed, many other podcasts are listed, and we'll continue to try to bring you the true story of what's going on today with Scientology. Thank you. Bye.